it's easy to forget that there's another awful war taking place, of course, in Eastern Europe. Yeah, are we entering an era of heightened global conflict? Seems like that a little bit. Let's talk to a man of talents. Let's put it that way. Military historian, espionage expert, because he is a former KGB officer. Alexander Vasiliev, good to see you this morning. What are we to make of, of, if we start on the global picture at the moment, why are we seeing this increase in tensions? It almost seems like it is a cycle that is coming around. Yes, I think uh, it's uh, radicalization and uh, uh, you know, the growth of uh, nationalist, uh, nationalist movements all over the world. And we're talking about the Middle East, we're talking about Ukraine, how to deal with it. It's difficult to say each area, each region demands its own particular solutions. Uh, let's talk about the Middle East, mm. right? On the one hand, uh, what's going on now in Gaza it looks absolutely horrible. Gaza looks like uh, Stalingrad. It looks like Berlin at the end of the Second World War. Mm. Civilians are dying, children are dying. Hospitals are, most hospitals are closed because there are no, uh, no fuel, there is no electricity. On the other hand, what's Israel supposed to do? What would you suggest? I mean, Hamas is a, is a threat, is an existential threat to Israel. And what Israel is doing to Gaza, in my opinion, if we put it in historic context, is what, is what, um, Western allies and the Soviet Union were doing to, to Germany during the Second World War. You may remember that uh, the American and British air forces were bombing uh, German towns and cities, not only uh, industrial uh, areas, not only military uh, facilities, but sp especially civilians. It, it, it looks, it sounds awful now. You think of Dresden. Uh, yeah, Dresden, Hamburg. Why? Because the aim was to undermine the uh, morale of the German, of the German population. On the Eastern Front, the Soviet Union, there was a slogan, kill a German. Not a Nazi, not mm. a German soldier, not a German officer, kill a German. It, it, and it wasn't launched by Stalin. It was launched by two very famous uh, poets and writers, Konstantin Simonov and uh, Ilya Ehrenburg. Because uh, mo most of uh, Soviet writers worked as reporters, war reporters for different Soviet newspapers. And Ehrenburg, for instance, was, uh, he was, he grew up in, in, in France. He was very much European, cosmopolitan uh, man. He knew people like Picasso, Matisse, like Louis Aragon. But when they saw with their own eyes what Germans did in Russia, in Belarus, in Ukraine, when the, we, oh, there was a blockade of Leningrad for 900 days, mm -hmm. about a million people died in Leningrad. People, they were bombed to death or they were starved to death. People were eating rats. So, but what do you conclude from that? I mean, is, are we always going to have war? Absolutely, think? I think so. It comes around, because I remember I grew up with, with the Cold War going on, and that was terrifying. And that was nice. <laughs> it was terrifying, <laughs> that was but yes, quiet. compared. But, I mean, maybe there will always be war. And is that what we have to tell young people nowadays who are, who are completely confounded by what's going on at the moment? Do you just say there will always be war and it's terrible, people die? I think there will be, I think there will be always, uh, always regional wars mm. in the Middle East. Because, look, in the Middle East, the situation is extremely complicated and if you but how but how much of uh, uh, you right i mean it's a, it's a total nightmare situation but how wider is it i mean is is it unfair to say that perhaps there could be a russian connection with this russia talking to syria syria talking to hezbollah you know, is, is this a, a useful distraction for putin well it, it I, I don't think uh Russia had any any role in in the in the events of the seventh of October, but it obviously helps uh, Putin helps Ru Russia because it distracts attention of the public opinion from from the war in Ukraine, mm -hmm. and Russia is um, you know Russia doesn't recognize Hamas as a terrorist organization. Uh, 
mm-hmm. it, which is different from Taliban, for, inst- for instance. Russia recogni- uh, believes that believe that Taliban was a re- uh, is a terrorist organization, not Hamas. And Hamas uh, representatives of Hamas uh, traveled recently to Moscow. They didn't meet w- didn't meet with Putin, but they talked to other uh, uh, officials. And Russians are saying about Hamas that this is not a terrorist organization, organization, but some of its members commit acts of terrorism. On the other hand, Russia has very good relations with Israel. And let me remind you that about 15% of Israeli population came from uh, the uh, former Soviet republics. They all speak Russian. And the relations are pretty good. So, for Russia and for Putin, is an, is a chance also to to look like a man of peace, because the Russian delegation suggested uh, several resolutions at the United Nations demanding for a ceasefire. Mm. It's pretty it's pretty popular idea now. Even President of France is supporting yeah. it, as far as I remember. So Putin now is uh, stands like a man of peace. Mm, the Which irony. Is extraordinary, yes, isn't um, it? Alexander, we're going to leave it there for now, but I know we are talking to you a little we'll bit later. later on. Thank mm. you very much indeed.